Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to start out by making a script tool. So in Houdini here, we're already going to start with this. And the first thing that we want to do is to create a shape that is going to represent like a certain scrub or, or bush. And you can choose anything, but to keep it simple for now, let's just use a sphere. You can just make a sphere and we can have a basic sphere. So this is our input shape. We can have a box can have other things like I said and the first step is actually making a voxeled version out of this and if you actually watch the IV tutorial before this one then you might actually recognize similar parts so we're going to do a voxel this is actually now called a remeshing node and you can see that this will turn this into a lower topology so we want to make sure we have the division size and make this a bit lower let's start uh, with this value, maybe even a bit lower. And uh, we can always come back to this and, and maybe tweak this a bit. In case my input shape is very large, then my polycount will also significantly increase. Then after this, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a normal. Because we want to calculate the normals of the mesh. So we're going to say point normal. We can also view the point normals by clicking the icon. So you can see that we have a lot of them. Maybe let's go a bit lower here for now. So you can see that we clearly have like the normals of each point. What we can also do is we can actually do a blurring of the normal. Um, this might be useful if you have like some other shape um, that might be useful to actually blur. So right now the blurring by default, it will be blurring the position. Uh, what if we change this to N for normal, we can start blurring the normals. Uh, so you can see we are blurring the normals, so we can blur that a bit. And already this is sort of like our first shape that we have. And I'm going to place a null node here for that. And this null node, I'm just going to call this uh, out. And then, for example, object with normals. So we are sure that in a later stage, if I need to get a reference back to this for getting, for example, the normal data of my model, I can re reference back to this. Now, next part, we'll be cutting off a part of the bottom, since I want to define where branches can grow, so they should mainly start to grow upwards. So we will cut a little part of the bottom. If you followed along with like the IV tutorial, it will be a similar setup. We're just going to use the clipping node, and as you can see, it will just clip based on here just the half. So we need to set the clipping distance, so we need to change here the origin based on the bounding box. So we can type in an expression called get the bounding box. And then we need to say zero because we are say, because we want to say look at itself. And then we want to define what axis. So in this case, we want to have the y axis since this is the, since this is the up axis. So we're going to say get the y uh, minimum axis. And now this is all the way at the bottom. And to tweak now the cutting distance, we're actually going to use the slider here. And now we can just quickly cut like a small part. So this can be very small. You can, of course, make this larger. So this can be an interesting parameter to play around with with the tool. Because this will control where the, where the main parts of the leaf should be. What we can also do with the clipping node is we can actually say that we keep all primitives. And that we store actually a group of them. So it looks like it's still my original shape. But now if I, for example, do a splitting node, I can split them in two parts. So I can now grab, for example, get the below parts. So this is the part, the lowest part, and then the other one is then the top part. So what I want to do here with that is, if I, for example, make it a bit smaller again, this part is where I'm going to define where the branch can grow. And then I'm going to use that other part, that other output, to define the ending of the branches. So I will make a system to calculate that. So first of all, uh, I want to make sure the branches can grow from, uh, from polygons that are facing more downwards. So I'm going to use the split normal. And this is just if you have like other different shapes, we want to define parts that are looking downwards. So we're going to switch this to minus y. And we're going to change this to, for example, let's say 35 degrees. So we are now looking at polygons that are only facing downwards in a 55 uh, area. 
in 55 degrees. Then with that shape now, we can, for example, do a scattering pass, so scatter node. We can scatter a couple points here. So these are all the points that could be a starting point for my branch. And in this case, we also don't need that many of them. Like by default, we will generate thousands of them. Um, so we can, for example, fill in a manual number like six. So now we have six parts where my branch can grow. If we talk about like making a script, they, they probably just grow from like one solid point. Um, so we can actually build in a fuse node here and fuse it back together. So let's say a pretty high value in fuse. So we're just fusing all this together. So the reason why I currently have this is if my input shape would be pretty large or would contain multiple parts, uh, then the fusing distance will not happen and then we have multiple parts. Then with this, I want to make sure we can, for example, use a rain node to check if we are close enough to our original shape. So we can, for example, do minimum projection. This, this is just to make sure that we are back on that shape if you want that. And then I'm going to create a group node. And we're simply going to say that this is my start point. So start points. And this is, of course, a type of points. And we can make a small little frame around this. So we can just here go with frame or shift O. And here we are generating the start uh, points for the growth. Now I want to do a similar thing for then the other side here as well. So what I'm going to do now is I maybe want to thinking of remeshing the shape. Uh, it's not always needed, but it can be interesting to do a remeshing step here. Um, it just depends a bit on, of course, what is your input shape. And then you sometimes want to do one thing or another thing, uh, depending on that. Then after that, we want to then create a noising value. And this noise is going to be used in the scattering. So we're going to change this to a float. We're going to name this density. And we do currently don't really see the noise. So we're going to say enable view. It's now in this color. We can also get this to a, a grayscale value. If we go here to our icon, uh, tweak icon and change the ramp here to a grayscale value. Now we have that in place. So now we can play around with that value. We can boost, we can scale. We can see we can get some variation. So in the scattering node now, I can now grab the scatter. I'm not going to scatter here with the counts. I'm going to scatter here with the scaling. And we can now use that density attribute here. So if I increase this, you can see that we will have more points uh, where we have like a lighter value. So when our noising value is higher, it will, it will create more points. So we can play around with settings here to boost that or play around with that. Like if I go to the, here, like the amplitude and boost things, uh, you will see that we have like higher densities than other parts. So of course you don't want to go too crazy. So let's bring this down to, for example, 600. That's good enough. Maybe this density should not be that high. We don't need that many points. So somewhere around thousand points is good enough. We don't need that crazy amount. What is also a good idea here is to do a jitter, a point jitter. This will add some noise, as you can see. But for now, I'm going to just leave the scale to zero. And in a moment, I will actually go back to this uh, and show you why uh, we are having this. Then we want to do the same thing as before, make a group node. And we want to say that this is the end points. So this is end points. Of course, we need to say that these are points. So we have that. And same as before, I'm going to select them and I'm going to say that this is the end point. So this way you can always go back and tweak these systems. So you can start to expand, do other things, other calculations here if you want that. So now I have a start and end location. I can, for example, merge them together. So we have these point data here. So I know where my geometry can start. So here we have like that middle point. And these are the ends. 
So one thing left here to do to find actually a branch that starts here and ends there is to sort of find this middle ground. So there's nothing in between the end and starting. So we need to also scatter a couple points in the air so we can actually define a certain growth of branch in that region. So there are multiple ways of doing that. Uh, you can just, for example, grab a point uh, from a volume, for example. So we can uh, grab here from so. And as you can see, like this will just scatter points in a object. And this is based on a grid, so it will cleanly align a following to a grid. So you can, for example, use that. We can also do a random deletion of this. So maybe we want to bring in some variation. So we can say randomly delete some of them. Um, like so, maybe delete color. And we can also do that trick with the jittering here as well. So we can offset the points a bit. So here, like so. So it's a bit more randomized. And I'm going to call this also a frame here. And this is then, for example, like the middle uh, points. This doesn't necessarily need a group. And we can fill that in over here. So you can see that we have now like points in the middle. We now have everything ready to do the next step, which is then actually finding that branch. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to sort the points into a good order. So I'm going to place a sorting node and we're going to sort based on the Y axis. So here sort based on the Y axis. So all the point numbers start from the bottom. So zero is, all, is at the bottom and the highest point number is all the way at the top. So that's like a quick way, as you could see here, to like sort the points a bit better. Otherwise you have like random points values there. Then we want to connect the points. So we're going to type in connect, connect urgent pieces. And we want to then switch the mode to just connecting points. And you can see that by default, it will just probably create something like this, which is a bit too intense. So I'm going to leave the search. So I'm going to leave the radius as it is, but the maximum points it can search can, for example, be lower to 10. Or it could be a bit higher, a bit lower. Uh, we can play around with that to see the results. Then the actual trick now comes with the find shortest path node. And this is where we're going to define our start and ending points. So here we're going to say our start point is, of course, that starting point, and our end points are those end points. So now we are creating this one single branch. And we want to change the output mode, as we have multiple of them, from any start to each end. So here in the middle, from any start to each end. And now we will create a shape like this. And as you can see, like this looks already like some type of branch shapes. And with that, I can also see now again, like this is like a still a perfect circle um, from our base shape. So if you want that, you can have that. So if I go back now to the jittering node that I had here, and if I add some jittering, you can see that we can have some more variations. We can really break this. Um, but I recommend you to, to like, given like a low value, just so you break up like the main shape. So it's not like perfectly round like this one. Um, also here with this jitter, make sure it's like has some value as you could see, but also not too high in value. So now we have our basic uh, branching system here. Now to give this some quick geometry, I want to do a few things. Um, I'm going to randomly delete some parts because they don't all need to be there. And I'm going to just click random. And with this, we actually want to delete now uh, primitives instead of the points. And we can now just say delete selected and we can increase now the ratio. So we can now delete most of the branches. So of course, this is for a game. So we want to make sure that we don't have too much branches going on because it will increase uh, the count a lot. So we can, for example, say delete like most of them. So we still have like some shape, but not too much. So we can quickly adjust that here. Uh, we can also make sure that everything is fused together in case it wasn't. Uh, and you can see like, yeah, it actually fused multiple points together. Uh, we can also double check on like the poly padding. So if we grab poly pad, this will actually uh, combine the primitives a bit more. And then the last thing here is actually doing a sweep. 
So we can sweep this shape. We can say that this is a round tube, for example. And we, of course, need to make this a lot smaller. And we can also change here the columns to something low. Uh, we can just go even just take a plane. Like this is just like a flat plane. And that will also work as well. So we have some shape in there. So what I still left to do is actually defining the scale. If you have watched the IV video, that I, then you know that I'm going to use the cost value. So in the shortest note, in the find shortest path note, it will actually give an attribute uh, called cost. So it will actually tell us how much energy it took to get to that point. So the farther the node has to search from the start to the end, the higher the cost value. So we can use that in our scaling. So if I now would remap this, so remap attribute, I can now say to grab the cost part here, so grab cost, we can then recompute the value. So we can then compute the range and we can play around with that. Now the thing here to do is to actually fill in this as a new name called B scale, which will be by default recognized. And you can see that this will scale it uh, from here. So the starting value will be zero because there was no cost needed to create that shape. So we need to inverse our range here. So we're actually getting smaller parts on the end here. And I would often prefer to have a zero to one range, just so we have a consistency in output there. So now I have these branches. Um, of course, you can also enable here UV in the sweeping node. So you can quickly compute UV and then we have that as well. And that was it for this part. So what we have done is we created an input. We did some processing on the input. Then we cut the input in two to define starting points. Where can I start growing? Then we defined where the end points are. And then we needed to also create that middle part to then find a way for the branch to grow from the start to the end. And next video, we're going to talk about scattering some leaves around. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.